This video explains how tables can be linked together to form a relational database. Now we're looking at the AQA GCSE project exemplar database, as you can see here. And if we look at the tables, we've got three tables, table customer, customer names and addresses, customer ID, the primary key, table sale, and table stock. Now stock is a catalog table. You can see it's like a catalog or a directory, and so is customer. Loads of records about individual customers, so fields of information. Now, as most of the business is being done in the shop, so the sales that are made are recorded in the table sale. Now I can go straight in here and I can just type in um, a customer ID. Let's put in number four. That would be put in the shop using a barcode reader. And if they're buying an item of stock, let's say item number three, that would be recorded. And the date would also be recorded. Now that's fine. We've recorded the number of each item of stock that's been recorded in the minimum possible way and as quickly as possible. We haven't had to write down the customer name or the name of the item of stock or the price. We've just got the numbers. And we know that number four and number three are in these tables. So customer number four is Thomas Hardy, well known. And item number three is aniseed soup. So Thomas Hardy has just bought some aniseed soup. Now I can look those up by going to those other tables, the catalog tables from the transaction table. But better than that, we can link the tables together Microsoft Access, the database management system, is anticipating that we will do this. And you can see that customer ID in the customer table is linked to the foreign key customer ID in the sales table that we have just saw. This means that Microsoft Access will, if we see customer ID number three in here, then Customer ID 3 will be looked up in the customer table. What do I mean looked up? Well, let's close that relationship window, hopefully. Uh, yeah, we'll save the thing. And let's open up a query. Now, queries are used for outputting the data. And let's put in our three tables and close the query. And first of all, I'm going to put in the sale ID, customer, stock, and sale date, and run the table. And what we see is just the information from the sales table, the data that's been input. Now, if I just simply add contact name next to customer ID and stock name next to stock ID and then run it again, we can see an output of information which has relied upon those links. So where we have customer number four in the sale table, the name Thomas Hardy is brought from the customer table and aniseed soup is brought from the product table. So Microsoft Access knows that these two tables are linked and so it has gone and looked up what is customer number four and presented us with this output which is Thomas Hardy. Now that query can be used just to look at on the screen, but better still, it can supply the information to a form, the sales form, and it can supply the information to a report. The advantage of this method of storing the data, well, let's just go back and have a look. Uh, we'll save that and we'll call it QRY. Oops, not sale and dealer. QRY, trying to do it single handed. I'm holding the microphone in the other hand. QRY sales, let's call it one just in case I've done another one. There we go. There's the sale table. The advantage is that we only need to store these numbers and the customer names are only stored once. No matter how many items of goods they buy, we don't repeatedly store their data. 
and the same goes for the stock. We don't repeatedly store them. If we were to store aniseed soup over and over again, we end up with a situation in which we were filling the database with redundant data. All we need to know is it's number three. And we'd also make errors and spell wrong. And look at that one. We never spell that the same each time or write it the same each time. And so if people were then searching the database for information, they wouldn't get all of the information out. It's far less chance of errors if you're just storing product ID as stock ID. That's unfortunate. It should be. It should be the same names. Right. In here. Right. This is how we form the relationship. We drag the primary key to the foreign key, enforce referential integrity, checks to make sure that we haven't got any customer IDs in here, like number 7062, that don't exist in this table. It's no good having a, a number in here that doesn't correspond to the number in there. So that makes sure that they always correspond. You haven't got any what we call orphans. Cascade update related field. So if we were to change the customer ID here, then it would change it over here as well. Cascade update deletes related records. You have to think about that one. If I was to delete a customer from here, would I want all their sales records to be deleted from the child table, the related table? Not always. And there we go. Create the relationships. Invalid field definition, sale ID. Oh. Yeah, you probably saw that. I didn't see that. Customer ID, foreign key customer ID. There we go. And that has finished this lesson.